I started working at MSU Denver in 1972. I got a position as a secretary for Chicano Studies. I loved it. I found out so much about the university and about Chicano Studies, but then I started getting promoted into administrative positions. It was a time when Chicanos and Chicanas did not access higher ed as much as they could have. High schools did not necessarily direct these students to take on a college career. They had to find that out for themselves. Often, these Chicanos and Chicanas were older. The universities and the campus was not ready for that infusion of a different culture, a different way of doing things. And many of the Chicanos felt that. Some, many of them were first generation. I was first generation, so I knew how it felt to be the only brown person on campus. And so for me, it was really important to be a mentor, whether they actually chose me or not. But students, Chicanos and Chicanos, made a difference, made um, an impact on university campuses. And for that, I think we're to be celebrated. This makes you strong, not weak. This is the purpose of life. One of the loves of my life has been involved with Su Teatro. It's one of the leading Chicano teatros based here in Denver. We began in the 60s and 70s as a, as a whole group of teatros that sprung out of the Chicano movement in the Southwest and in, in Mexico and Central America and South America. And I have to say, we started, I started out being with Su Teatro playing in the park uh, where you just put up a sheet, that was your backdrop and you call people who lived in the neighborhood, there you go, it's a show. And now we are on Santa Fe at the um, Civic Theater and it is a beautiful place. And I've had the privilege of playing so many roles uh, at Su Teatro. Tony Garcia is, one, is our artistic director, but he's a phenomenal writer and um, has written some wonderful roles. Su Teatro addresses those issues that are facing the urban area, the city, but also the state and the Southwest when it deals specifically with the development and the, um, the uh, issues surrounding uh, Latinos, Chicanos. So Su Teatro has lived for nearly 50 years. I will have been with them for 48 years, so it's quite an accomplishment. La, 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 buenos dias. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Canción Mexicana. And I am Yolanda, and I will be here with you this morning from 9 o'clock until 1 o'clock. I'm a volunteer at KUVO. It's an exciting venture for me. There are three of us, mujeres, three of us women, who uh, take turns co-hosting uh, Canción Mexicana. We have spent the week or maybe longer putting together a playlist of old music, the classics from Mexico, also the music from New Mexico, from Texas, music that features our own Colorado artists, and a local group, Latin Touch, with a song called Creí. So please stay tuned and stay with us, okay? You are able to connect to the community and we have listeners who have listened to us since we have went on 35 years ago. You're connected to their, to their living room, to their kitchen, on, in, on, in the car. The music is the part that, for me, it brings up whatever's going on in people's lives that they tell us about, and they do. I was always taught that to be a person of purpose, you had to be a person of service. You are only as healthy and as good as your community. So the work will probably never end, but it is very important to me um, that I'm part of a, a community that feeds the soul through music, through entertainment, where, you, where our community can ha access health issues and education. So I feel like it's always been that give and take. 